Hi everyone, Rade Rade. So yesterday was a very, very powerful day for me, very intense breakthroughs. I'm going to share those with you. Um, so the, the breakthroughs that I want to share with you are, well, the, the basic core concept is that it's okay if things take a long time to heal. It's okay if things take a long time to seep in. Um, it's okay if you've been going through the same patterns for 20, 30, 40 years, more than 50 years, 60 years. It's okay if you've been going through all of these patterns all of your entire life and you finally feel like you're able to or you haven't even yet been able to figure it out and you haven't been able to heal that pattern and you're now starting to unravel it maybe you're starting to discover to look into it and and the thought that keeps coming to your head is that i haven't managed to do it for like 50 years how can i do it now i haven't managed to do it for 70 years how can i do it now who do i think i am because that's what people will tell you you haven't managed you haven't succeeded two three times you fail four times you fail what do you think you can do now of course you can't do anything now and that's absolutely not true that is so 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 far from the truth we have been living, now this is my belief, you may not believe that, but I believe that we have been living for gazillions of lifetimes, not just one lifetime. And we've been, we've come as many different species. We've come as species of plants and animals and whatever, and humans. And we've gone back into universes and come back and universes have been created and destroyed. And our, our soul along with our subtle body has been stored, uh, along with our karma has been stored and we've come back and we've gone like, we've just gone back and forth and back and forth and we just keep doing this. And we've uncovered, so people talk about trauma, right? Like I have childhood trauma. This is what we can see in this lifetime. But I don't think it's just childhood trauma. I think it's trauma or or whatever, anartha as karma. Like we, we've accumulated all of these things based on the gazillions of lifetimes that we've been at. So what are these few years, 50, 60, 70 years? What are these? This is nothing. This is a blip. This is a small, short blip of time to uncover those, to, to heal those, to work through those. It's nothing. It's totally, totally okay. Okay. So the example that I have, um, for example, is like there, there are many people who will talk about having anchor points. When you are going through a personal growth course and you feel the strength and you feel this like, I yes, I can. Yes, I can. I am the voice. Like, you know, Tony Robbins says that I am the voice. And uh, so he asks you to have anchor points. Like, what is a gesture that you can, you can do? Yes. Like that was my anchor point when I did the Tony Robbins conference like so whenever I say yes I feel that strength I can go back to that moment in the personal growth course where I felt that strength and I can go back and I can access that that strength and I've been doing this for seven years personal growth course and courses and I've not been able to succeed in figuring out this anchor point I would come up with many in all different many different personal growth courses I would come up with all different kinds of anchor points and nothing would really stick and then finally, two nights ago, it's something stuck like mad. It's stuck and it's God related. So I was like, I was desperate. I was crying all night. I was having this just insane thing. I was like, God, please give me a shelter. I'm feeling completely lost. I'm feeling completely, you know, rudderless. Please give me shelter. And please help me feel your love. And I was just saying this over and over and over again. And I was crying and I was, I was sleeping. It was the funny thing is my watch says that. And I felt it too, that I was sleeping. But through my sleep, I was saying this, like, because I was so desperate. God, please give me shelter. God, please help me feel your love. Because he does love me. So I can't say, please give me your love. So I'm saying, help me feel your love. Because I, I don't feel it. I can't access it right now. So I, I was saying this. And then I was like, I want to have my deities, my um, the idols that I have. I wanted to hold on to them and hold it next to my heart and just cry into them. And then I was like, that doesn't sound right. I want I worship them. Like I, I don't want to you know do that. So then what do I do next? Then I was thinking, I'll go get a stone. Because in I have had this thing where, where I do this gratitude exercise. And again, they had this anchor point. So you get a stone, a, a nice stone, whatever you can buy a stone from somewhere or you can get it outside whatever and I put it next to my bedside uh, in the bedside drawer and at night when I would go to sleep I would be grateful I would do a gratitude exercise for everything that I was grateful for today and the best thing that I was grateful for today which is an excellent exercise by the way to figure out the best thing you're grateful for today makes you go through everything else so you really 
get into a great state. But you, if you hold the stone while you do it, then you feel that, like you're, you're infusing that stone, you're using that as an anchor point. And I did that a little bit here and there, but I didn't. So I was, I'm doing the gratitude all day long. I'm trying to do the gratitude. So I didn't specifically necessarily, I mean, I had a gratitude prayer at night, but I wasn't, yeah. Uh, but I wasn't able to do this anchor point. So I was like, okay, so maybe I should get a stone right now and hold it next to my heart and just cry into that stone and and um, desperately call out <laughs> to God for help by crying into that stone. Then I was like, no, I don't, I don't, that doesn't also. Then I thought of this. I'm wearing this Tulsi Mala like uh, all the time, 24-7. This is something that we do in, in the temple congregation that I am in. We do this. We wear this Tulsi Mala. And this is a representation of Krishna. This is the representation of the love for Krishna. This is the representation of like Krishna, I'm yours. This is the, the God that I'm believing in. So I was like, this is what I can do. I can just hold on to this. So at night I was just like, you know, I was like sleeping like this, but like holding on to this. And I was just desperately holding on to this and crying into that, like thinking of that. Because I don't have to do anything extra for this. And this took me seven years to get to. But it felt so right. I was doing this the whole night. I was just holding on to this. And then the whole day yesterday, I was walking along when I was walking, when I was doing my walk, I would just touch it. Every time I would think of somebody and I'm like, I'm finding myself looking for validation from that person. I would touch this and I would be like, Krishna, please help me feel shelter from you instead of looking for shelter from this other person. You know, anytime I wanted to connect to Krishna, I would just touch it and I'm walking and nobody knows what I'm doing, right? I'm just touching this. It's perfect. It's just a perfect anchor point. But it took me that many years. The point of this thing is that it took me that many, seven years to get to this place where I feel this as feel an anchor point. And I wasn't even wearing this until a few months ago. Somebody gifted me. I wasn't even ready to wear it on my own. I would never have bought it. But somebody gifted me and it was beautiful and it was perfect. And it was just the like and, and the fact that she gifted it and it was just the perfect timing somehow Krishna just sent God just sent her to me to gift gift me this like just out and I don't even know her very well I don't even I, I want to cry at that just the thought I don't I barely even know her I've met her a few times I think she had just bought an extra one and she was looking for somebody who's not wearing one already and she found me and she just asked me and I was like, yeah, yeah, seriously, yes, because it's beautiful. It's more beautiful. I, I looked on Etsy and Amazon even and I couldn't find something as beautiful as this, the, the Tulsi Mala, the Tulsi neck, neck beads, necklace. Um, you can find all kinds of things on Amazon and Etsy, but nothing as beautiful as this. So I was, yeah, so anyway, so the way things worked out, you know, step by step, step by step, the, the way things worked out. Now I have an anchor point, which just came to me on its own seven years later. And I didn't have to beat myself up for not being able to do that exercise properly earlier. You know, I did it when it was the right time. So basically what I'm saying is trust that when it's the right time for you, you will be able to learn whatever it is that you're learning. You might be learning a million things in the personal growth courses or whatever you're doing. Um, I mean, for me, it was a personal growth courses, but whatever you're doing and you might beat yourself up like, oh, I did. I've tried it. I've tried it for a day or two. I tried it for a few weeks. It didn't work. I lost it again. And I might lose this again as well. I might not hold on to this for the rest of my life but I might what if I do you know there are some things there are many things that I've let go that I've tried and I've done for a few weeks and then they have not worked out but there are many things that I have as well there are many things that I have changed so as long as we trust that the right thing is going to come to us at the right moment and it's going to stick if it's meant to stick if it's the right time for it to stick, if God gives us the grace for it to stick with us, if it is, if he considers it the right time for us, then it will work. Right. And we do try. We try with our with all of our might, because yesterday I during the day I started to lose. No, during the day I was OK. But then at night I started to lose it a little bit. And I was like, oh, I'm not connecting with this as well as I was connecting the night before. And which makes sense, because the night before I was in a in, in a case of absolute desperation. You know, last night I wasn't in that state of absolute desperation. So it totally makes sense. And then I have to remind myself, no, I want to do this. I want to connect with Krishna this way. I want to connect with got this way so anyways whatever learning that you do just trust and the second thing is um the identity work uh, i'm going back to the identity work now so 
our identity so my identity used to be that i cannot work hard i'm a very lazy person i cannot work hard i'm emotionally weak all of these kinds of things so i have been putting them down now the thing is what does that mean many times we will see that it does not put down what do you mean by putting it down how do you how do you just shift that like how do you just shift and say i am a hard working person you don't just do that overnight it's it's been decades and decades and decades of me holding on to that this is my who this is who i believe this is who i had believed that i am but the way and i have switched it i have been i mean maybe i don't know how much i've switched it is probably a percentage to it but i don't identify with that anymore because i feel like i have and why is that is because i talk to myself so how do you do it the first step the very first step is to know intellectually in not knowingly but intellectually that it is possible for me to shift this identity when i know that intellectually and when i can say that it is possible this is an affirmation that i can say that you can say to yourself you know whatever identity you have whatever the, the identities create the limiting beliefs so whatever limiting beliefs you have go to that identity uh, underneath that and say it is possible for me to shift this the so in the, in my case the identity was i am not a hard working person i am a lazy person i can and the limiting belief is uh similar i i cannot work i, I, I don't know the difference <laughs> exactly i mean um yeah but it is the identity was that i am a lazy person this is who i am i am a lazy person and it doesn't matter how much evidence i've had of where i've worked like mad for things that i care about and i've not worked for things that i've not cared about it doesn't matter you know the identity was that and the limiting belief is i cannot work hard i can i mean yeah i cannot work hard so go to that identity what am i what what do i consider i am what i am like whatever thing that doesn't serve you and start to affirm intellectually not i am a hard worker or whatever but i can um uh, shift this identity i can that's the very first thing just i can intellectually understand i can shift this identity it is possible for me to shift this identity and once that starts to happen then every time i feel like i cannot work hard or i'm not hard worker or i'm lazy or whatever then talk to yourself and i've i've given this example multiple times before is there any evidence even one time is there any evidence that you have worked hard and if there is then the statement is no longer true so you talk to yourself every time so basically think every time you're thinking of something uh, of of a negative thing switch to think of the positive thing positive thing meaning not like i i am the best most hard working person on the planet but positive thing meaning i i have done this before i can shift this identity i have evidence that i've worked hard before this is just uh, a, an identity that i'm holding on to for some reason now what is the reason we're holding on to there are many 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 reasons for that many um, i'm not going to go into that right now but just knowing it doesn't even matter the thing is knowing i can shift it and then working thinking so what is the most difficult what is one of the most difficult things in in the world it is thought it is thinking like even climbing mount everest is the the harder thing there is is the thinking behind it it is not so much the physical thing the physical thing we can prep for it is the thinking it is the main, ma- managing our mental hang ups like no i've done too much i can't do any more when you know that you can do more right that is so right now what you and i are doing this exercise is climbing mount everest it is it is not easy so who's with me who wants to climb mount everest with me you know so this is what we need to do keep thinking and it will happen a thousand times a day it is it does happen to me still a thousand times a day i'm i'm thinking like no i i cannot do this i i want this person's approval or i i cannot do this because it's too difficult or whatever and it a thousand times a day you relentlessly 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 bring your mind back and say i can do it you talk to your mind because it is the subconscious that's surfacing all of these limiting beliefs and all of these things so you you talk to it you talk to it patiently patiently ever so patiently is this true can i do this can i can i have a different identity this is it possible for me to have a different identity and the answer is of course yes and that's it you leave it at that you don't try to recreate the new identity immediately what is my new identity 
I am a hard worker. Yeah, you don't even try to do that immediately. Just, just the idea is to let go of the original one first, and then let new things come in in its place. It'll automatically come in in its place. Automatically, you'll start to do more in your day, or autom- whatever uh, your limiting beliefs are. Or automatically, you'll start to do less in your day if that's your thing. You know that I can't have relationships, or I can't relax, or I can't like I have to go, go, go. Like that, that's your identity then. Um, if you start to shift that out, then automatically you'll start to do whatever it is that you, if you, like, I can't have relationships, then automatically you'll start to reach out to people, you know, um, you'll start to recreate your new identity. Okay, so what I'm, yeah, okay, so the the point of the second point was that um, it's okay, even if it takes 20, 30, 40, 50 years um, to heal whatever it is that you're healing. As long as you know I am on a good path, I am on a right path, you do not beat yourself up. There are two paths, very clear two paths, right? I have not done this for so long. There is something fundamentally wrong with me. I am the queen of, I have been the queen of the thinking in that way. Like I, there is something fundamentally wrong with me because I've not been able to do blah, blah, blah for so long. You know, all my life I've not been able to do this. So this is something. Or the second path is, okay, I am here right now. What is the next thing for me to do? What is, it doesn't matter. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how many lifetimes it takes, let alone in this life alone. What is the next step for me? What is the next step of growth for me? How can I shift my thought pattern so that it will serve me? How can I shift my thought pattern so that it will help me? And relentlessly keep shifting that thought pattern. Relentlessly, relentlessly keep shifting that thought pattern. Okay. Um, Yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Um, Yeah. Please, 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 please don't beat yourself up for what you have not achieved until now. Just keep going. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. And be patient and relentless with everything that you're doing. And trust that whatever is going to come will come from God's grace at the right time or from the universe's grace or whatever you believe. Okay. Wish you a day filled with lots and lots of tiny, but powerful, immensely beautiful breakthroughs. Radhe, radhe.